this story is illustrated of why men won't get married. Okay. I'm not picking on people. I'm not picking sides. I'm just going to relate to you a story that happened to a buddy of mine. So I knew this guy where I used to work at this one company. He was, he was uh, worked for a supplier and he'd come around once a week and he and I would have this big chit chat about how to make money, how to do side hustles. And he had all kinds of side hustles. You know, he was really into baseball cards, big time, you know, he's into baseball cards and trading cards and all that stuff. And when he, you know, you know, we just shoot the, you know, what together. And, uh, one day, uh, he didn't come around his normal round. I said, Hey, what happened? What, where's he at? Is he sick? No, no, he, he had to take it off. He had to take it off. He's on some kind of emergency leave. I said, man, I hope everything's all right. Well, I didn't text him because I feel the guy has a lot going on. Just leave him alone. Now, I'm, I'm not really a friend. I'm kind of like an acquaintance type friend, you know. A couple weeks later, he shows up and, and I said, hey, how's it going? He goes, it's pretty rough. I said, you're doing all right? He goes, well, and this is the story he told me. And this story is pretty interesting. And you'll learn a lot. You'll learn a lot in this story. And uh, if you're a guy, you better pay attention. So he told me that he said that the week that he didn't show up, the week I was looking for him, like, where's he at? Because I had a question about something and he knew the answer and I couldn't get a hold of him. And uh, he said, well, it was a Tuesday morning. I got up for normal and uh, he got, I got up, I, you know, took a shower and all that stuff, fixed lunch for myself, fixed lunch for my wife. He goes, I give her a kiss, slapped her on the backside, out the door I went. He said, I was driving around for about an hour or so. He said, all of a sudden, my phone starts blowing up. And he said, my phone's blowing up. And he goes, Some, my bank account is being empty. He's like, my God, I, I'm being hacked. You know, I'm being hacked. I got to do something. So uh, he starts calling the bank and his account's being uh, emptied. So he starts calling his wife and his wife won't answer. And he's like, what the hell's going on? He, in his mind, he's thinking someone's kidnapped, kidnapped my wife. You know, something's going on here. So he... He, he drives, he's in a big delivery truck, you know, he drives like hell to his house and he says, I opened the door and he said, I'd only been gone. Maybe, maybe I'd been gone three or four hours at the most, but you know, he, cause he gets up early, he's out. So, you know, he leaves the house at six and he's on his route. So he gets the house maybe around 1030. He leaves the house. He gets back at 1030. The house is completely empty. There's nothing in it, but a pile of his clothes laying in the corner. The house is empty. Nothing. Cars are gone. Every scrap is gone. He's like, what in the hell is going on? Now, he started putting two, to two together. So he starts trying to get a hold of his wife. She won't answer. So he's like, well, do I? So he calls. I think he calls the police and puts missing persons thing in. And of course, they, the cops give you that. Well, it's going to be 24 hours and all that stuff. But we'll be on the lookout. And, all right, whatever. So eventually he finds out that his wife has run off with another guy and that when he left that day, they were, they were in a, a, a van and they kind of, him and this guy and his buddies swarmed into this house and just emptied it. And off they go, emptied him, empty his bank account, empty his house, took everything, just took it off they go. Now this point is, this part is really important and you better pay attention to this part. So he told me this and I didn't realize it until he told me it. So we're here in Indiana. Now he had gotten married in Kentucky. Now Indiana has no fault divorce. There's no alimony. Kentucky does have alimony as far as I know, as far as he knew and what he was telling me. So he had to get up the next morning and drive like hell to a courthouse to file for the divorce first. So he could get the divorce started in Indiana because he told me if the divorce had started in Kentucky, he would have to pay her alimony. Now think about that for a minute. She goes back to Kentucky, files for divorce in Kentucky. Now you're going to get stuck with alimony. Now he started telling me things. Of course, I kept my mouth shut. You know, he said, he, he goes, I should have known better. And this is where, you know, men tend not to pay attention to the warning signs. He said one of the warning signs was my wife would go out in the garage and sit in, sit in her car and talk on the phone. And she told me she was talking to her mother. <laughs> I didn't say anything, but I guess my face must have said it all. I'm like, that's a gigantic red flag. You know, it's gigantic. So what, what I could piece together from this terrifying story 
is she had a guy who knows, maybe he's into drugs, maybe he's into criminality, who knows what the hell he is. And he's on the side and they pick a mark. Okay. He was the mark. Okay. They're going to pick you as the mark, and then she's going to come on to you, and she's going to do all those things. And this guy, basically, this boyfriend or whatever, he's basically just pimping her out. Just a, it's a it's a new new way of an of the oldest profession. Okay, it's just a new way they do it. So is that so he basically is pimping her out, and then they're going to steal all his money, steal his house value, blah blah, blah ruin his life, and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Because you signed that piece of paper to get married to that thing. And worse, they were going to head back to Kentucky, put a divorce decree in there. So those two creeps could get him the after they have, you know, basically ruined his life, taken half his money, maybe taken all his money, ruined his life, destroyed him psychologically. Now they're going to make you pay a monthly payment for, I don't know, five years, two years, whatever it is. This is the state of marriage in the world you're in today you don't know you better as a man and this goes true as women you better know especially this is true for women who have money or have who have a family that has money because the game can be played the other way okay so you have to be aware of that person's history and family and criminal record and everything. You have to know. You just can't get infatuated. And men are men are prone to this, right? Men are prone. You get infatuated. A woman pays attention to you, okay? And then you go head in, and you're not paying attention to that. She may have puppeteers or handlers or someone's blackmailing her. We we could be a hundred thousand things going on, but in his scenario, that's what happened. Now. A couple of weeks went by, I didn't see him, and then a, a new guy got on the delivery route, and the guy popped off the truck one day. I said, hey, where's such and so? He said, we don't know. We don't know where he is. I said, well, what happened? He said, I, and I told him, I said, did he tell you what happened to him? He goes, oh, yeah, we all know about it. I said, well, he told us here. You know, we're sitting here, and we were, we were, in, we were in shock listening to that story. He said, we don't know. He said he came in, threw his keys on the desk, and says he was done. I said, was, was he mad at everybody? No, he was friendly to us. He goes, he goes, I'm just done. He goes, I got too much going on. I got to take care of this and I, I can't deal with the job right now. So not only, and so I, and I don't know this guy's ultimate fate. I don't know his ultimate fate. I, I inquired once someplace, can't say where. And, uh, I kind of got a strange answer from the guy and he kind of wanted to know why I wanted to know. And I said, Hey, I'm just kind of a, a acquaintance of him. He goes, well, I'm not going to give you any information because he goes, I don't know who the hell you are. I said, well, that's fair enough. So I just, I left it at that and I've never inquired about him. But but uh, that's what happened to that guy, you know. So to recap, you know, he gets up, goes out the door. This woman's handler, pimp, boyfriend, MK Ultra Specialist, I don't know what the hell it is, says, okay, here's our plan. You, you're, you're going to get married to him. You're going to stay the allotted time. Uh, and, you know, and and then we're going to strike. And that's what he did. He went out the door and hit this this strike team, literally a strike team with a rented truck comes in and bam, gets everything. Bam, and that's why this strike team is emptying the house. There's another strike team emptying the bank accounts. You come back to nothing. You come back to a divorce, destroyed life. And you come back to the fact that you might have to pay alimony because they're going to race to another state to get divorced there. This is a dangerously cautionary, cautionary tale. This is not, uh, this, and I've been hearing more of this. That's why I hesitated to put it out there because it's going to give people ideas. But since the criminal element already knows about this, you people who are going to get blindsided by this, you need to know this is going on. Now, I'll put this as a disclaimer. It's possible everything I told you I just made up and was totally fiction. All right? And maybe it is totally fiction. And then again, maybe it's not. Don't let this happen to you. You better know what's going on in your world and who is in and out of your world at all times. Stay strong.